huh? Coach. Yo, what's going on today, fam? So we are back again. And as you see behind me, I have this beautiful 2000 Bug Eye STI. And this is a right-hand drive, a JDM model. And we have its owner, Cam, right yeah, here. Yep, and he looks like a Subaru a Vape Bro right now. But I promise he's cool. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> and so we're just gonna uh, do a quick uh, walk around because I'm be doing a review of this. So how many miles does this have? 204. 200. Roughly about 128,000 miles. 128,000 miles. Okay. And so just tell me a little bit about the car right quick and like what's all done to it. All right. So it's a 2000 uh, WRX STI. So it's the new first generation GD platform after the GC8. It has the version 7 EJ207, which has the forged internal lightweight uh, wrist pins, uh, additional oil squirters for the high rev, mm -hmm. um, VF30 turbo. And then, of course, the six-seat transmission without DCCD, and it's an open differential, so it does not have um, locking diffs or anything like that. Um, other than that, it's mostly just 100% stock. Cool. And you bought this as a donor car, right? Yes. Yeah, so I bought it with the idea of taking out the entire drivetrain and engine to swap into a 99 2.5 RS coupe to make a 22B replica. Dope. 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 Let's get a quick glance of the interior. This thing is so clean, man. Like, I swear, all these, like, JDM imported cars, they always have, like, the nicest interiors. Like, they really take care of their stuff. Six-speed, like you said. And it comes with uh, four-piston Brembos in the front and two-piston uh, Brembos in the rear from the factory. Has these dope OZ racing wheels. And then under the hood... And this is the EJ207? Correct, 207. Yeah. And this has the forged internals, you said. Semi closed deck, um, high rev, with ABCS on the intake only. Oh, God, that's dope. And this thing revs at 8,000 RPM. So, super stoked to get behind the wheel of this thing. You know, this thing is super clean. And yeah, so all that's left to do is go and drive it. All right, y'all, we are in. The Subi right now. And we off. Yeah, it's a stock uh, 
STI suspension with uh, group and lateral links and trailing arms in the rear. Okay. Nah, like it's dope because like even we just going through those corners, like it felt like very compliant, but still it was very composed, you know. It wasn't a huge amount of body roll, but mm -hmm. it was enough of a good amount of body roll. And yeah, it's still very stiff. Yeah. Flex and 
um, and like just the whole like a chassis uh, stability will be worse with the GC um, compared to this or do you think that it won't really make that big of a deal? So with the GC the thing is that one of the big things you got to do is always stiffen the chassis because it's um, such a light car and yeah. it's not not much support would you to like the GD would be. So of course you want to get chassis braces, um, try to stiffen up the frame as much as possible. Okay. Um, or do a half cage which can always help out as well, pull the back seats. So you really want to try to stiffen it, otherwise you start getting too much play, too much flex. Um, and with having like the 22B wide body kit on it, it's all glued and painted. Mm -hmm. Too much flex, you start having the possibility of starting to crack the paint in certain locations. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. And we're going to have to turn around and go back. It's like you see on the track, you see certain cars that have high horsepower, they don't ever get to use it all the time, except for you say, okay, on a straightaway or certain sections you can. But some of the fastest cars aren't the highest horsepower cars because they can use full power, their full power and stay flat out more, more times than not with, say, like a 600 horsepower car on the track. Mm -hmm. uh, most definitely. I just think that like even with like just being on the street like just having like less horsepower like you come to appreciate that more you know like after you experience uh, like some fast cars you're just like this is too fast for the street dude <laughs> like th this is too much which is hard to believe that such thing is too much horsepower but I know right a crazy if you can't concept. use all of it then what's the point of having it uh, Okay, I mean, yeah, we're, we have the Autobahn, we can use, you know, six, seven hundred horsepower. It's fun, but you're going in a straight line or slight turns. But once you get into, like, back roads and stuff like that, where you can really have the most fun and really push your car, you're just always just kind of easing down the throttle, and then you're already off of it again. And you yeah. just... <laughs> I mean, but it's hard to tell the internet that, you know... Everything is about horsepower. Yeah, it's hard to tell people. Okay, okay, okay. So it's 280 horsepower 
crank. At the crank, yeah. How many foot pounds of torque? Um, right about 260. How did I forget that measurement? Like, how did I not ask about the horse flying torque? But how they're so similar? No, 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 no. I mean, like, you know, I use a little axe, you know, like, that's one of the first things about axe. But, like, just like, how much power, you know, is the car making? I just, like, completely forgot to axe. I guess I was just too excited to drive the car. Because it's irrelevant. It really doesn't matter. It's, it's how it performs. <laughs> Man, this thing is a blast, though. I mean, we're sitting around 6K where most cars start to redline and you're just starting to get into the point where the... Yeah, the man. Jesus. I definitely wouldn't mind a little bit more break from it, though, but, you know, it is a bit old, so I'm sure you can use like, some pads and some new rotors now, but... Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, again, previous owner, don't know what he did to the car, don't know when the last time those were changed. It did have, you know, service history. It shows um, all the services on it, timing belts been done, stuff like that. But it definitely can, you know, starting to show its age, yeah. and the wear and tear. Still, though, man, this thing is just coming along. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm definitely getting a lot of uh, vibration at the steering wheel um, on braking, which. It's a donor car anyway, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, right? <laughs> Don't plan on using the front brake, so... Wow, but I will say, like, this car really does inspire confidence. It's just like, as I'm going around these corners, you know, the car just feels planted. It has the right amount of body roll. I feel like I know, like, what the car is doing as I'm coming. Um, I like the steering is light but direct. Um, and which I feel like I have a connection with the car. You know, I feel like I'm connected. I feel like I know everything that the car is doing and it's just giving me that very analog and visceral experience that we as car guys love, you know? Like everybody talks about like analog this, analog that, and like this has it, you know? I'm very much impressed, man. You know, it's um, it's definitely making me a, a rethink my opinion on Super <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, so there's something about older Subarus where they're more fun to drive. They're more raw. You feel everything yeah. in the car. Everything that's going on is it has a very mechanical feel to it. Um, I know everyone hears that, you know, saying a lot, that mechanical feeling. It's like uh, comparing like a new Porsche to uh, like a, an old 911. Yeah. Where everything is mechanical. You feel every gear shift. You feel everything in the steering wheel. You feel everything in the brakes. Um, and then you get into newer cars and everything is just so refined and so, you know, comfort features. And, you know, they don't want you to have that same feeling as, a you know, an older car has where you're more in tune with what's going on. Yeah, most definitely. It's like, it's like these days with cars, you're being more like isolated from the actual experience, but. Yeah, it's all about that comfort. Yeah, which it seems like the late 90s, like early 2000s was just a golden era, like for that, like connection, you know? It's like all those things we love were just like perfected, you know? Like that throttle response, that like nice hydraulic steering, I don't know. But yeah. Well, this has been dope. I think we are going to call the review right here as we're going back into town right now. But Cam, I appreciate you uh, letting me uh, have a go in the car. It's been a blast. Yeah. I very much enjoyed it. <laughs> I very much enjoyed it. Um, so uh, where can they find you at upon Instagram? So Instagram, it's JDM underscore my 12. As I used to own a GR STI, um, went through the headaches of cracked pistons and the fun rebuilds. <laughs> and then you can also find me on YouTube at 303 underscore abroad. And you can watch my build of the GC8 um, there and on Instagram. Dope, dope. Well, it's been dope, brother. I appreciate uh, you. Take it easy. I'm out.